please talk about, so what is your theory of aging? As in, <laughs> why do you think we age? Okay. My, my favorite theory of age, right? Yeah. So I start by saying something that maybe the audience is not aware of, that actually there is not such thing that call evolution of aging. It's, I know it sounds like something very weird, what I just said, right? Mm. Because we, we used to say there's evolution of everything. But actually in, in nature, the amount of organism, of animal that reach old age is very small. Mm -hmm. that because of that we believe that there is not enough population for evolution to happen in the aging process there are several nature papers about it i can send you the paper it's, mm -hmm. it's basically it's saying that because we die in in the wild earlier than aging evolution of aging it's difficult to, to be involved mm -hmm. does this make sense yeah yeah so now we need to, now we're going back and we ask, okay, so how can we explain aging, right? Mm -hmm. How can we explain uh, what's happened in aging? So this, now, why did I start from this uh, comment about the evolution mm -hmm. of aging? Because it means there was the time that we are expected to survive, which is usually 30% of our lifespan, and the time of modern age that we indeed survive, which is almost 80% of our life, right? We're expected to survive. If I was in, if I was a mice, if I was a mouse in, in, in the field, I will die up to six to seven months. Mm -hmm. In protected environment, it survives two to three years. Now, now we're going back to the, my favorite theory of, of aging. So my favorite theory of aging said that process that happened when you are young, and they are very positive, because now it, we, we survive longer than we were expected. These processes are continue to be acti activated. And this gives you the, the negative effect of aging. We give you two examples of this. Okay, I think you will. Did you hear about mTOR or about <laughs> rapamycin? Mm -hmm. Right? Rapamycin. Yeah. So, rapamycin, you can give it to, any, to, to many animals and you can extend the life. Why? Because you inhibit the activity of TOR or mTOR. What exactly mTOR is doing? mTOR is very important. Take the signal from nutrient that you eat or from the environment and convert it to growth to increase in size and so on. This is why it's so important at a young age. But mm. since we survived longer than 25 than 30 years old, what's happened now? We are keep eating more than we need and mTOR activity is still high even, even at at, low, at the old age, that you don't need this high level of empty. That's what I said, that we, have, that we pay the price of processes that are very important at mm -hmm. young age, and they continue to be active just because we survive longer than what we were expected to survive. And this is the example of empty. Mm -hmm. And once you take up a mycin, you block it, and now you get, you block the negative effect of empty. Vice versa, you take a, Metformin, metformin activates the uh, via AMPK in some cases, and by this, it's mimicking the conditions that you don't have enough uh, enough food, and uh, an mTOR level are lower. So mm -hmm. This is two examples of uh, what is my favorite theory of aging. My favorite theory of aging is that the reason why we age, it's because we were supposed to survive to much shorter time. And there are two things that really help. One is that processes which are very important in young age, nothing can stop them. And they are continue to happen at old age and we get negative effect. This is regarding metabolism, that we keep it too much food and we, this metabolic signaling is high level and we pay the price of aging at the end. The example mm -hmm. is mTOR. Then other side of this theory, is that we were expected to survive to 30%, 30 years. And our maintenance, it's not enough for more than 30 years. You, you keep repairing your DNA, you avoid DNA damage, but at the end, it's not enough because you are calibrated to 30 years, but you are not calibrated to 90 years. And this is the reason why it's so much like 36, because 36 is sit in the middle of one end. DNA repair, as I said in the beginning, 
which is the maintenance, and the other is the metabolism, which is paying the price of metabolic processes that continue to be active at old age. Mm. Interesting. So how, how did CERT-6 evolve? The question is, usually people ask me why the level of CERT-6 is not higher than mm. usual, right? Right, that's, yeah. I think that's it. Um, CERT-6 uh, evolved. Its main goal is to, pro to provide energy at times that you don't have energy. Now, this is very important even at young age. For example, if you're a predator, let's say you're a lion and you don't have enough energy to hunt your, your food, you will not survive. Mm -hmm. That's why when you starve, the level of cell six is going up and it helps you to maintain your energy at times that you don't have energy. This is the evolutionary role why cell six level is going up under starvation. It's not because of aging. Age, aging is artificial situation that we created in modern age because of the protected environment. You, but, the, but if you look on animals doing evolution in, in, in nature, most of them do not age. So you cannot explain that cert six evolved to support the aging. It's not because they do not age. Cert six evolved in order to maintain the energy homeostasis, for example, under period under normal period, but also under period that now you don't have enough energy and the animal need to survive. So now cert six is going up because the animal didn't eat enough, like under color restriction, the level of cert six is, going, is raising and it's helped the body to find other, other sources of energy. And by this, it can survive longer and at the end it will survive because you find food and, uh, and so on. Okay, yes, thank you. So. What do you see as the most promising longevity technologies now that will make the biggest difference? I, I'm not going to say what is the, the, the best or the, the main one. I think that uh, first, I'm, of course, I'm close to what we are doing. So mm -hmm. I definitely say that once we will be able to, to do something that will, well, to finish the, the process of activating to, to Mm. Develop method to activate cell six take to take to human. This will be a big, big advantage in the field. Also, some some advantage could come from a, a senolytic drugs, but senolytic mm. drugs at the end in, in in mice, at least in mice, the effect is still mild. Mm. Eight percent, nine percent. I think uh, it's not so it's not so high as, for example, when you overexpress thirty six. Mm -hmm. or when you or when you inhibit mTOR and so on. And, but I also think that there's something that we are not yet in, which is that the revolution that happened next to us, which is the use of big data mm -hmm. and or artificial intelligence and so on. And I think that the next step will be how to take to take a lot of data that we collect and out of it we'll that we do another project in my lab. We try to find what, what allow, long, what using big data to find what allow you to live longer. And you can do it either by using, collect a lot of data from metabolomics analysis or from a transcription analysis. But I think this would be the next uh, step in, uh, in aging research or in aging therapy. Right. Yeah, no, that would be very interesting. Uh, okay, so thank you so much, Dr. Cohen. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you. Bye.